I've been working in Duchenne muscular dystrophy the last 30 years and this is a disease that affects uh, one in 3,000 births. There are about 200 boys in this country that are affected by the disease. It's a devastating muscle disease, there's no treatment and what we're aiming to do is to try and find a therapy. In 1980 we didn't know where the gene was so we tried to do genetic, we well, didn't try, we succeeded in doing genetic linkage to localise the gene. Um, our colleagues in Boston first identified the gene which is called dystrophin because the absence of it causes dystrophy and since then everyone around the world has been using different approaches trying to replace the gene in its entirety, trying to increase levels of compensating proteins which is what we're doing and trying to correct the defect in muscle cells. The gene was cloned in 1986 and three years later we discovered that in the human genome there was another protein that's almost identical to the protein that's missing. Uh, it is expressed in muscle very early in human development at the same time as the missing protein. Uh, we call it eutrophin because it's expressed everywhere and uh, we've demonstrated in mouse experiments that if you increase eutrophin in adult muscle to the same levels as it is in fetal muscle you will end up uh, compensating for the lack of uh, the missing protein dystrophin. Genetics has always been in the background of physiology and they've been going in parallel. But now there's a real opportunity because in genomics you can now use new tools to look at the protein profiles of tissues, you can look at the RNA pro profiles of tissues and you can begin to look at which pathways are changed when physiological problems occur in disease states and then you can create hypotheses and then use the physiology to work out what's going on. Say in the 1980s we knew that this protein dystrophin was missing. We could then work out this was at the muscle membrane, but we couldn't work out what it did. Now we could get readouts in physiology because we know your muscle doesn't function and we know how it doesn't function and you know have, you have problems with your heart, your cardiac dysfunction. What we can do with genomics is isolate the muscle and ask the question which messenger RNAs are changed? Why is, which pathways in the proteins, signaling pathways, are changed? So we can begin to understand what underlies that physiology, which we could never do before. Uh, the advice I would give to female scientists coming up is to be uh, tenacious, uh, be determined, and just go where your passion leads you. If you really love your science, which I do, then you will get there in the end. And there's far less prejudice now than there ever used to be. People are very encouraging to females. And the other thing is, if you've got all your balls in the air and they don't all come down uh, when you want them to, don't panic. And I think when you have kids, you have to remember that all the time. And the crisis passes and you survive and you still enjoy it. So be positive. <laughs>